And welcome back to Liberty Under, Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. I'm your host, Shane, and I'm uh, joined by my uh, two co-hosts, Stan and Danny. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, we interviewed uh, Derek Bros uh, from the Conscious Resistance, and uh, we're waiting for uh, Jamie Sherman from uh, Anarchy Ball and the Volunteer Series uh, comic series um, to uh, um, to get here. So I'd like to return back to uh, <laughs> um, my. Oh, looks like he is actually here right now. So we'll go straight to uh, we'll go straight to Jamie. Uh, go ahead and pull him in. Jamie, are you there, brother? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Hello. Good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, definitely want to thank you for uh, um, for joining us this evening. Yeah, no problem. I'm just laying here in bed, just relaxing. So, you know, I figured <laughs> let's talk. Right on, right on. All right. So, um, first off, um, I want to first say that I absolutely love Anarchy Ball. I found the page about uh, about four months ago, and uh, I'm almost positive that my fascist book news feed is probably comprised of almost about 50% Anarchy Ball because it's just so perfect. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah, you're definitely doing a great job over there. Um, so first off, uh, Jamie, why don't you uh, tell the listeners a little about your work, a uh, little about uh, yourself, uh, your work, and uh, how you uh, got to uh, volunteerism. Sure. Um, well, I guess you could say... It all started back a while ago when I was in college. I uh, was in a history class, and we were learning about the American eugenics movement, and it was something that I had no idea about. I didn't know that in the United States, eugenics was kind of founded and exported over to Germany, and so that kind of caused me to revisit everything that I knew about history and about politics, and kind of from there... When I was about 20 years old, I spent the next three years um, slowly but surely moving in a libertarian direction. And um, I you know, came into a lot of different media outlets, um, Mark Stevens, uh, you know, as many people love or hate, Alex Jones, and so on and so forth. But just kind of just going through and just reading everything I could and listening to everything I could and just putting the pieces together. And, uh, and eventually I went from, as many do, that whole progression of being of one political party mindset to, you know, kind of like a minarchist libertarian. And eventually I kind of said, well, to be logically consistent, I have to, I have to be a full on voluntarist. You know, I have to just accept the philosophy as, as the base. So that was mm -hmm. kind of my journey as far as uh, going down the path of voluntarism. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Just, um, why don't yeah. you uh, tell the listeners a little about, uh, about your work? I know you have a, a few projects going, um, so why don't you uh, um, like, kind of inform them about those? Sure. So the main uh, project right now is uh, my comic series, the Voluntarious Comic Series. Uh, we currently have an issue that we're campaigning on uh, on Indiegogo called Saving Snowden, the Voluntarious versus the NSA. And the idea there is kind of a you know, semi-fictional universe where... Um, there are uh, superheroes who are uh, taking on the government. They're, you know, standing up against the government trying to permanently enslave everyone through a false flag. And in this kind of mini episode, uh, Snowden security is put at risk while he's in Russia. And because of his sense of location, the only people who can get to him in time before uh, Putin lays out his own nefarious plan um, are the voluntarists, and so it's a bit of unfolding of, you know, real-world events, kind of getting people into the comic universe um, with some hot-button political issues, but also introducing uh, true libertarian values uh, through that medium, and so it's, it's kind of exciting to work on that and to, you know, bring some of this contemporary um, into a world that doesn't really get that kind of, of, of treatment um, that it should, as many comics are kind of getting dry and boring uh, with the storylines these days. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, if I may step in real quick, I uh, just want to say it's it's amazing what you're doing with uh, the comic comic book series and Anarchy Ball. Um, the Anarchy Ball images strike people's cognitive dissonance in in a certain way through uh, through comedy, and uh, I, I know that for a fact. Um, my my roommate actually, who doesn't pay attention to politics at all, um, he comes up to me and mentions like that was an awesome picture, like to for the Anarchy Ball ones. Um, so it's comedy and entertainment are two great avenues that need to be utilized more um, in our effort to uh, build a truly free society. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I'm with you there. As far as things with Anarchy Ball, I have personally watched 
um, people who I've been friends with who didn't know that, you know, I just was one of the people that made some stuff with them, uh, with Anarchy Ball, um, but watched them start to share those things, not because, you know, it came from me, uh, but ju they just came across it. And I've been watching how uh, kind of the satiric humor has been pervading into, uh, you know, people's lives and norms in a way that, they would have never gotten the message otherwise. If you just try to go and talk to those people about these issues, you know, they probably tune a deaf ear. But because it's been these funny memes and because it takes place with, you know, the kind of like the ball of humor, which is very popular, it's really breaking a lot of, of, uh, of borders and boundaries. And that's just beautiful um, to see how many people are willing to, you know, open, open up and kind of laugh at these things. And then that laughter is turning into a true heart change. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree, and I've, I've kind of seen it myself, too. I've seen people share them from my page. That I would never expect people to share images like that or with uh, messages like that. Um, so, uh, and unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to check out uh, check it out yet, but after the show, I'm definitely going to uh, give what I can to your Indiegogo campaign uh, for the new comic series, and I definitely recommend our, our listeners do the same. Uh, you can do that uh, by going to tinyurl.com forward slash saving Snowden. Again, that's tinyurl.com forward slash saving Snowden. And uh, I know there's a lot of offers out, an offer, a lot of offers on that page, depending on how much uh, you are able to give. Um, so you kind of already told us about the uh, uh, the volunteers comic book series um, and what to expect. Um, so I'll move forward to uh, this. There was a <laughs> there was a video put up on the Anarchy Ball fascist book page titled "Anarchy Anar Anarchy Ball is Life" uh, or "Anarchy Ball is Love, Anarchy Ball is Life." Um, please tell me that was your creation. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, the video part was not me personally created. I, I know who did. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just hilarious. I mean, I, I love that it was taken off of the Shrek video. Um, yep. But the, the people who wrote the language for it, the admins did that. I mean, just spot on. So, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I agree with you. It's good stuff. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I actually would like to play that short clip really quick, if that's okay. Uh, for, for the listeners here, here's your trigger warning. If you're easily offended, it is recommended that you mute your speakers for a couple minutes. But if you aren't, I'm sure you'll enjoy the laughs, uh, no matter how uh, disturbing it might be. So, producer, please cue up clip two. I was only 29 years old. I loved Anarchy Ball so much. I had all of the merchandise and stickers. I prayed to Anarchy Ball every night before bed thanking him for the means I have been given. Anarchy ball is love, I say. Anarchy ball is life. My statist wife hears me and calls me a faggot. I know she was just jealous of my devotion for anarchy ball. I call her a cunt. She slaps me and sends me to take out the trash. I'm crying now, and my face hurts. I'm on the sidewalk, and my neighbors are staring at me through the window. Suddenly, a warmth is moving towards me. It's Anarchy Ball. I am so happy. He whispers into my ear. This is my page. He grabs me with his invisible hand and puts me down onto my hands and knees. I'm ready. I spread my ass cheeks for Anarchy Ball. He penetrates my butthole. It hurts so much, but I do it for Anarchy Ball. I can feel my butt tearing as my eyes start to water. I push against his force. I want to please Anarchy Ball. He roars in a mighty roar as he fills my butt with his freedom. My wife walks out. Anarchy Ball looks her straight in the eye and says, The roads will be paved with children. Anarchy Ball flies away through the power of capitalism. Anarchy Ball is love. Anarchy Ball is life. Alright, and you can go ahead and cut that. Um, but yeah, that's as uh, some a little taste of what you can expect from Anarchy Ball, along with a lot of uh, a lot of great memes. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, probably one of the, my favorite uh, videos I've seen on that page. Um, so, Dan <laughs> Danny, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. What? I was just I was just laughing. It gets me every time. I love it. <laughs> it does. It does. It's it's always hilarious. Uh, so, Danny, Stan, have you guys heard that video before? No. No. Not at all. I think Stan might have. What is that? <laughs> uh, you've, you've you've seen that video before, right? Oh yes. Oh yeah. It's it's it it's a classic. Quite good. It is a classic. 
So uh, moving forward, I want to kind of discuss some of the things in the uh, anarchy, anarchy ball memes, if that's okay. Um, so um, sure. obviously there's different balls, like Agora's ball, uh, Ancom ball, things like that. Um, uh, I noticed the majority of them are the Ancom balls. Um, so I'd, I'd ask this question. Why do, you, why do you feel it's important to point out the absurdities and inconsistencies of the uh, anarcho-communists? Um, you know, it really is just a matter of, of kind of laughing at the caricature more than anything, um, just because they do fit just this nice, neat blend that, you, you know what I mean, it's, it's such a stereotype that you can so easily make fun of it. I mean, not, saying, not to say, of course, too, that there's a lot of issues with the ideology as opposed to what Anarchy Ball represents, um, because obviously Anarchy Ball is very pro-free market. Um, but th it's just one of those things where it's like you have this character and it's just the perfect character to lampoon. It really is kind of like the crux of, you know, making, uh, uh, of characters to make fun of. And so a lot of memes will involve, uh, the Ancom ball. It's kind of like the, it, it, it's not necessarily a nemesis, but it's almost like that kind of, uh, of character that you have around just to poke fun at. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that, that, that revolving joke. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, I also noticed that uh, um, uh, um, Anarchy, Ball, Anarchy Ball is pretty hard on the social justice warriors, too, which is definitely comical because it uh, <laughs> points out the obvious. Um, could you tell us a little more about, uh, I guess, uh, the different characters that you have in the, uh, in the Anarchy Ball comic series and kind of uh, um, go into a little more on that and, uh, like... Um, um, why, um, if you have any additions you're going to add to, uh, the, uh, Anarchy Ball series, things like that? Sure. I can, I can talk about the ones that are out. I mean, you know, for example, like the Fem Ball or the Feminist Ball, uh, a lot of the critiques that are being made with third wave feminism specifically, are, you know, we're not talking about old school feminism in terms of, you know, legal norms where women were treated as property. We're, we're, more so against the concept of the modern social justice warrior, third wave feminism concept. And the reason is because it's just totally polluted um, what is supposed to be the foundations of libertarian philosophy. And that is that libertarianism is not about people's personal preferences as to how they want to express themselves with culture or personal norms and things like that as, as, as far as how they want to live their life. I mean, you know, if you want to wear a giant, you know, dildo on your face and, you know, say that you like to be a different type of, uh, you know, animal every day and, you know, wear tutus, that's fine. Don't really care. But when people make it a, a, a prerogative that that has to be tolerated as a, a social concept in order to be a libertarian, um, that's really what we're trying to critique um, in saying that, no, that has nothing to do with libertarianism. Libertarianism is about respecting everybody, no matter what, on private property norms and respect of, of course, body and personal possessions. And so mm -hmm. um, it's really kind of like a, a counter to um, a lot of what's come out of uh, libertarian left um, and, and, of course, modern liberalism um, that's just trying to trying to totally soak down the core principles of of what it means to be free market and to also have you know a free mind and a free body yeah yeah indeed indeed um so danny stan uh, do you have any uh, questions or, or comments for uh, uh for jamie not really uh any questions but i uh, <laughs> i have to say i'm a big admirer of his work yeah, it's very uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Keep it up. <laughs> the humor, yeah. the humor is pretty. I, spot I, I don't on. want to take all the credit here either. I mean, this is something that involves. It's much bigger than me. It's not. You know, I'm. I'm by no means a founder. I'm. I'm just one of the people who is a content creator. Um, but you know, it's taken a lot of work from a lot of dedicated people over time. So it, you know, it, it's definitely something that has a diverse group of people who work with it from around the globe and um it, it's awesome it's a lot of fun well let me ask um i'll be honest with you uh the, the, the imagery is forgive me it's kind of rough in terms of like 
I, I understand. I'm not trying to be a critic. Um, it oh, seems like something I could like draw up fairly easily. So I'm kind of curious as to sure. what what do you mean by um, like you have like a large group of people working behind it? Because the actual sketches themselves don't seem very complex. They just they show contradictions within. Uh, you know, patriotic, cultural, um, anarcho-communism thought. So, could you could you specify on that? Sure. I mean, as far as the drawing goes, yeah. I mean, it's not like anything complex, but there are nuances to all the characters, and there are nuances to the language, the humor, the cultural relevance. Um, I mean, look around. It, you can't really find too many people that can consistently make, even with simple drawing. Um, humorous content that is hard hitting um, and plays off of a lot of uh, very nuanced cultural political uh, norms, especially within liberty. So, as much as it's like, oh yeah, those are just like little lines being drawn and like you know coloration. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into the process of like putting these things together. And some people are good at you know creating that and mimicking that. And, you know, go for it. I mean, that's the whole point. Is that everybody make some good stuff. I mean, I want everybody to make awesome things for liberty and make their own anarchy ball memes and whatever. That's that's fantastic. Um, but as far as, you know, people who know how to, who are in that mindset, who know not only how to put those things together, but have, you know, the ability to put it together in a way that's hard-hitting in a meme, that actually can be really difficult. And, you know, creatively, um, it's easy to get exhausted and, and to you know get out you know get out of the mindset of, of feeling creative, I mean, even for very creative people, um, it takes it takes a lot, and that's why even like for major TV shows, you know, you have whole teams of writers who are who are working through any major you know TV show or sitcom or movie. Or, you know, it takes a lot of people who are constantly pushing each other, you know, thinking about things, critiquing each other, that kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Indeed, indeed. So, um, your Indiegogo campaign for the uh, Voluntarist uh, comic series, uh, um, the Saving Snowden one, that is uh, done in three days, correct? Yep, just a couple days left, just like you said. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's um, I think we're nearing the two K mark, so that's fantastic. You know, the more money raised equals more pages. It's just how it goes with it. So you know, keep on going toward the goal. And if anybody wants to follow along, they can always go to volcomic.com. That's V-O-L-C-O-M-I-C, volcomic.com. Um, from the website, you can navigate to anything that Facebook page, YouTube, campaign, you know, see past works, past issues, download issues at no, you know, cost kind of thing. So lots of ways to get involved. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and I will go ahead and uh, plug that uh, link again. It is tinyurl.com forward slash saving Snowden. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash saving Snowden. And I did put that in a short URL because that other URL is pretty long. So, um, right. so I guess, uh, um, let's see. Um, any other future projects? Uh, I mean, I know you've, uh, you've done a few of these uh, different uh, volunteer, uh, voluntarist comic series. Um, is there anything in the future? Uh, any? Uh, do you have anything planned for the future uh, in addition to uh, this uh, Saving Snowden uh, uh, Volunteers Comic Edition? Sure, I can tell you a couple little things, both on Anarchy Ball side and on comic side. Comic side, you know, my next hope is to get more serious into tabling and maybe get some animated readings of the comic. I really would like to get to a point where um, maybe I can get some voiceover um, and some kind of action audio rolling into it as people can like watch and read the comic go across. So, you know, the goal with it was always to go toward a movie end, you know, preferably maybe 2D animation first, but, you know, that's something down the road. So I'm trying to step-by-step step incrementally go up with that. Um, and then with the uh, Anarchy Ball stuff, you know, we're just trying to grow some new mediums. We've uh, tried to do things with even video games in the past, so that might be something that we're able to do in the near future and uh, some other little things here and there, but it's always, it's always happening. So it's, there's always something that we're trying to work on and see if we can make, you know, quali a quality outcome on. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, like I said, I definitely appreciate the work that you're doing. It's uh, uh, comedy and entertainment are an avenue that need to be uh, explored um, a lot more than what they are um, in this situation that we're in. A lot of people are angry. They're, uh, um, they're pissed off. They get depressed and, um, and uh, they lose hope. 
Um, and I think we need to um, kind of do the uh, Simon gesturing side of it a little more uh, as far as like making fun of uh, making fun of the state, making fun of uh, um, all of these contradictions and uh, absurdities. I think we need to move forward with that. Um, and I think that would be uh, um, that would definitely be beneficial for uh, um, for our uh, goal in restoring liberty. I, exactly. I'm right there with you. The humor, making fun of it, you know what I mean? When, when you can take the state and turn it into the, the butt of the joke and get everybody to laugh, that's when you're really winning people over. You know what I mean? When people are actually saying, yeah, you know what, the, sto the state is a joke, isn't it? Then you start to see a real change happen. Yeah. Yeah, and let me ask, how, how long have you, have you been doing, uh, I mean, the Anarchy Ball in the, in the comic series? How long has it been? Mm. Comic series has been about three years. Anarchy Ball has been um, oof, maybe like eight months. Okay, so it's pretty recent then. So. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, around with Anarchy Ball for about yeah about eightish months. They approached okay. me a long time ago, and I said no, and then they kept pushing, and I was like, all right. <laughs> all yeah. right. Um, so uh, I mean, Stan, Danny, any other questions for uh, um, for uh, for Jamie here? No, I think I'm good. Okay. All right. Um, well, so, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, <laughs> I understand this may be kind of a contentious issue. Um, and I understand I'm I'm kind of a militant in my view on uh, I guess religion. Do you have any intention of uh, I guess getting into uh, a religious uh, theme or humor. Um, I mean, there could be. There's sometimes there's little things we to touch on, but it's just not really the focus of Anarchy Ball. Anarchy Ball is, is focused on making fun of the concept of the state and making fun of uh, those who hold uh, economic philosophies that are so provenly absurd that they get to be, you know, the consistent set of jokes. Um, so it's really kind of just outside the purview of of, um, of the content. You know, and yet it, Anarchy Ball focuses mostly on those really poor things that are, um, I guess you could say, really trying to dismantle the foundations of libertarianism. Um, you know, so we're, we're talking about things that are really going uh, against that. I mean, if there was something that was, you know, if Scientology came out tomorrow saying, you know, socialism is the best, maybe there'd be something related to Scientology in that way kind of thing. See what I'm saying? But it's, right. again, it's, it, it's really about the, the ideologies that are trying to say, oh, you know, you need the state or, oh, you know, you, you don't own yourself. Other people do in you know, some form of bastardization of, of practicality. So, I don't, I don't disagree with any of that. I just, I guess, coming from my, uh, and again, I, I, I'm not trying to start any type of debate or argument. Um, one of the views I tend to hold, and it, it just seems to me that um, a lot of the monotheistic religions tend to hold a... Um, kind of an authoritarian uh, view. And to that end, uh, you know, being a libertarian or anarchist, uh, authoritarianism strikes me as um, at all costs. Uh, it, to me, it's not just the, the idea of the state. It's the idea that something or someone uh, rules over you, regardless of whether it's a, a um, you know, an earthly entity in the context of government, or a uh, supernatural entity in the context of uh, religion. To that, that's I guess that's what I was asking was that, do you see that as a um, uh, I guess consistent, at least with, uh, I won't say consistent, but um, something, a topic at least to discuss within Anarchy Ball. 
Um, I, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, you know, it's one of those things that it could come up in some way, but I. It's. It's really unless there's something that happens that's culture worthy with it, it's not really a direct focus of what Anarchy Ball really is about in terms of the critiques it focuses on. So, I mean, that's a whole other debate that, you know, lots of people have, you know, is it possible to be um, voluntary slash anarchist, um, anarcho-capitalist, and also be a religious adherent of some sort? Um, but again, we deal with concrete terms, and, that con- and those concrete terms are, are things that are ideologies about economics, ideologies that seek to, um, you know, kind of tear down the fundamentals of free markets, free minds, free bodies, those kinds of things. Um, okay. So to the extent that, you know, somebody touches on that, maybe, but, you know, it's all about human action, uh, not about the action of gods. All right, fair enough. Okay, awesome, awesome. So uh, last uh, last question for you, uh, Jamie. We are coming up to the end of the broadcast. I've been asking this to everyone I've interviewed in the past month and a half, and uh, I think it's an important question. I'm actually going to put like a mashup of, in a YouTube video. Um, in, in your opinion, what is the best strategy for restoring liberty? Um, personally, I think culture change. Um, from what I've seen, that is the only way at this point to really dismantle the state is from the bottom up, um, get people to stop believing in it, get people to see the state um, as an evil, uh, not as a necessary evil, but as an evil, as a joke. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that comes through uh, people beginning to see what government really is on this display and beginning to get comfortable um, seeing uh, critiques of government or lampooning of government in every medium possible. And I'd say that as I always have, um, whatever your talents are, if it's crocheting, playing guitar, soccer, building houses, you know, painting, anything, any talent you have, find a way to introduce liberty in it. If you could show people how to fix a car, and you can do that on a YouTube video, and you can put at the bottom, I also like to, you know, or, you know, go to Macy's.org, or this is my favorite book, and, you know, libertarian book. Whatever it is, inject the discourse of liberty into any cultural medium you have and start mm-hmm. spreading it, because that's the only way it's going to change. Is if every single avenue of culture begins to have a uh, libertarian theme injected into it, that becomes an accepted norm. It's a slow mm-hmm. creep. Okay. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely uh, agree with that. Um, so uh, thank you so much for coming on, Jamie. I definitely appreciate your time. I know it was short notice, uh, um, but I did want to get this on the record so we could hopefully push some more contributors to your Indiegogo campaign. Um, I wish you uh, all the best in future projects, and uh, hopefully we can have you on again to, uh, um, to talk a little more on these issues. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate it. It was good to uh, talk to you and uh, have a lot of fun. Oh, not a problem. Well, you have a great